Um, hello and welcome. This is the sustainability track on African Renaissance TV and I'm your host Mohamed Bibaji. Thank you for taking the time here to join us today as we talk about project sustainability with our guest in the house, Mr. Babukar Nyang, the finance director of uh, Center for Research and Policy Development, CRPD. Um, Mr. Babukar Nyang is one person I know who has consumed and invested himself to lead the society. He is known for his selfless um, efforts to youth development and community communal engagements. Um, thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation today. Thank you, Mohamed. Uh, like you rightly said, I am Babu Karnyang. Mm -hmm. I am a uh, Gambian and I am working for Center for Research and Policy Development. Thank you for having me here. All right, you're welcome. Um, sustainability. Um, today we are here to talk about project sustainability. I mean, sustainability has somewhat become um, a household name in the world over, Africa in general, and the Gambia in particular. I mean, so tell me something about sustainability. All right, so, so thank you very much. Um, in defining it, it's, it's simple. It's like uh, saying, what are we putting in place that is going to be long lasting? after in fact projects are being uh, brought to a community, to a country yeah. or to the continent of Africa. Uh, that, that could be a sort of definition. However, it's beyond that. Okay. Uh, when we talk about sustainability, how could things go beyond the planned life of, of, of project. it? Mm -hmm. That is uh, the project itself being brought to the country and particularly in this interview, I'm going to focus on agriculture and then we are going to discuss on how those projects that were brought in this country in a form of agricultural support at which we are not sustainable enough to be able to support even farmers who were doing those projects after even the project phase out. So it means uh, for sustainability here we are talking about in those projects how could they go beyond the time that they were indicated to be in the project lifespan. For example, if the project was supposed to be for three to five years, after that five years, how could those people who the project were beneficiary to them would be able to continue those projects from that end of life of the project in which it was brought? That it is indeed um, one of uh, the greatest topics that we can discuss today. And then, like I said, it's a household name in the world over. Um, so talking about that, um, what are these challenges in terms of um, um, ex experience that you, you have gathered in youth work, in communal engagement, in project implementation? When you look at uh, this in an African context, what would you say are the biggest challenges to sustainability? Uh, the biggest challenge to sustainability one is not involving people in the uh, design of that project. You see, these projects most of the time are designed for people. And the ex best example is if the people of FAS have been helped or they are supposed to be supported with a project mm -hmm. on how to improve their livelihood in terms of farming or carpentry work, mechanic or whatsoever support that uh, a particular entity or agency want to give them. Uh, the best method to support those people is involving them. One is either putting them uh, in the forefront of designing the project, mm -hmm. which is a challenge. Most of these mm -hmm. projects are designed by, for example, uh, multilateral donors, international donors, using baselines or other indicators of which had existed and changes could occur. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest challenge in having projects sustainable in this country, in the continent, is not involving the people at the grassroots in designing those projects. And then that will also have a, a huge bearing in the implementation of those projects. Project. Why? Because at the inception of those projects, they were never involved. The initiation of those projects, they, you didn't invite them to be taking part in the process yeah. from day so, one. So, so the ownership would be missing. The exactly, the ownership, ownership of that. that will be missing. The other thing is, like we design projects uh, for a particular indicator or meeting uh, or ticking some boxes. So that is also another challenge. We should be designing projects to be able to change life and livelihood. And in ensuring changing life and livelihood, we should not target the quantity. Of it, so the qualitative aspect of it also should be as an indicator of ensuring that this project are sustainable and continuity. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you have a project of targeting thousand beneficiaries. It's not about just going and meeting the thousand not, beneficiaries. It's not just the numbers. The numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond the numbers. And another challenge of that being beyond the numbers is it's not going to have an impact because you are targeting thousand. You had the thousand and you are satisfied. But so what is going is, can, beyond can that missing. thousand mm -hmm. to have the impact on that? Like let's say, for example, we say 1,000 people sensitize on pesticide control, or for example, sure. agricultural mm -hmm. uh, support on how to control pests. 1,000 people, fine, you could 
get the project to go and sensitize, get a vehicle, put a foil in the vehicle, pay uh, 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 DSAP whatsoever to the people and go and sensitize the people. But what is the end product of that sensitization? Mm -hmm. After informing the people, are they going to take it up? Will they practically use it? So the challenge is also not the numbers only. So it should be go beyond the numbers to ensure that it is sustainable. Uh, yeah, we should go beyond the numbers. I mean, I think impact, like you said, it should be um, the, bo the barometer here, not the numbers, not the uh, just the mere numbers of saying, okay, we are meeting a particular target. This, but then how impactful these projects are. So, um, so for for that, in measuring that impact. Um, I would always uh, have this question in me that, okay, um, generally we understand that economics teaches us that um, human resources are always um, limited, but our ones are unlimited. I mean, how does this play in terms of sustainability in project, project implementation? So, so, so that comes into priorities. We need to prioritize what we need. And then in prioritizing what you need, you need to take it up to, okay, let's take it as an example of this. If the people of CRR are very good in doing granite production, mm -hmm. the, the priority of us supporting them mm -hmm. should be only in granite. And then they work on the production of those granite to be able to ensure that they have the granite, use the nuts to get uh, 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 income from it, mm -hmm. use the hay to g feed the animals, animals for the mm. use the uh, uh, um, uh, peels from the nut to use as a reproductor of fertilizers. So you see, that is the change. So the priority should be that our needs will not be ending, but no. let's prioritize what some people need. need okay. If the people of URR's one is on uh, a, a rice, why not? Let's give them the rice as a priority of those things. So that they got the strength that they have. And then this is why as the economics you're talking about, we have what we call the comparative advantage. Uh, advantage and then yeah. in this comparative comparative advantage, one country, one community and the other has a comparative advantage to the other. Maybe growing ground yeah, is, is better mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. is better mm -hmm. in CRR than in the effort. So invest in CRR for them to have a granon and then we will be doing a trade-off. And in that trade-off, that is where we are going to now put up these things. So for us also to look at sustainability part of, of, of this uh, process, like I said in the beginning, we will look into agriculture because in this thing, it's uh, more relevant to that. Looking, for example, in, in Gambia's context, in Africa's context, in general, Africa is just taking agriculture in the, dem in the supply side. We need to now start taking off and agriculture the in the demand, demand side. Demand that is, we are supposed to also ensuring that that granite that we are doing, it is not only ending in granite as raw material. We could be able to produce something from it and export it and gain another income, additional income. How could we do that? We need to stop this ideology of giving it out for trade, uh, for, for donors, for loans and whatsoever. We need to also establish trades among ourselves in ensuring that our projects are sustainable. The reason why most of our projects are tied to number of years is because that is what the project timeline talks about. Mm -hmm. IMF will say that we are giving Gambia government a, a credit project. facility of this. Mm -hmm. uh, World Bank will say we are giving them of, the, of five years. And they will, they will say, World Bank will say we will give you a 15 million something with a credit facility of this term, maturity of 25 years, 1.5% of interest. So therein, we are thinking of how to fill the gap within, within, within that, that short duration. period and continue, continue, continue. There will never be a sustainability. How could we attain sustainability is to ensure that we are using the limited resources that we have to explore on those things. That we, Gambia could now start making fertilizers for ourselves. How? Locally. We could be locally be able to produce that. Mm -hmm. Tell me which of, uh, with all the big river and that we have, in terms of getting sustainability that we are talking about, where are we making sardines? Look yeah, at the rivers. They're important. Exactly. And then Chinese are picking up, Mauritanians are picking up, European Union is picking up from our river to take our raw materials, that is the fish, go and make it sardine, yeah, bring it again with a pack and buy. sell it back to us. When shall there be sustainability? Indeed, that would be a difficult question to answer. But with that, and I think um, it's something that we, I mean, all stakeholders need to look into. Um, but I want to look at this uh, in one uh, perspective. I want to have, uh, understand the specifics. What project have you seen in the Gambia with your um, experience uh, in youth development, community engagement, working with CSOs? What specific project can you tell me that is uh, a sustainable project in your eyes? That would be very difficult. In fact, the question would have been, what projects have you seen that was not sustainable? Success. 
What? <laughs> if we don't have that, if we don't have um, the ones that we think are sustainable, let's go with ones that oh, are not sustainable. Well, that would be very difficult okay, for me to do. I, I, I want to have here, like space it's going to be the longer. Like for example, Gambia used to have uh, these banks called Visaka. I'm not sure if you know village, I yes, don't know whatsoever, yes, Visaka, so, so, Visaka sure. banks mm -hmm. that we are, you know, in the in, community. In different communities. I'm yeah. not sure if that is working. And now look, for example, the, the, the their structures are still, still here, in, here, in villages. In but villages. look, for example, when the Teachers Credit Union came, it's one of the most sustain, sustainable projects that they've started. Look at it now, not only teachers are there. Yeah, so are the innovation should be, you know, you need to have the leadership, you need to have the focus. You know, when, 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 when the Teachers Credit Union came in, mm -hmm. it was a small hub. Now it's bigger than some of the banks in terms of membership. And that is also a very good sustainable project that we could use as a way of bringing sustainability in the country by ensuring that members are uh, importing their money, putting in their money and then expecting return in, in, in that money that they're investing by either having an account, saving accounts or a loan so what, whatsoever. So that could be taking us one of the most successful. Coming to agriculture, for example, mm -hmm. then we used to have projects called NEMA. GCAF, first debt project, and then they were in all over the country. What were they doing? Mm -hmm. They were supporting uh, farmers in doing what? Locals, uh, you know, support in production whatsoever. Tell me, where is it? It's gone. They've all faded, it used to be 1.2 mm -hmm. billion US uh, uh, dollars, uh, dollars. Then those projects, those three projects. Anywhere you come across, what you will see is the vehicles, is the motorbikes and all those things so these are the things that we need to now graduate from if we want sustainability of those things like i had a chat with one of my friends then sometimes in 2014 2015 you know what he told me that let's uh, uh, the money that was involved in the, if we divide it among all farmers in this country each of them was going to have a term that was going to get you in that particular year fertilizers uh, uh, seedlings and everything and then you were going to have production so now uh, uh, coming to the question of what is sustainability in terms of projects that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I like the approach of the Teachers Credit Union, you know, as a project, I will call it a project. What else? Yeah, it's, it's a microfinance. It's a technical, it's technical it's a project, project yes, because it it's now, mm -hmm. you know, being seen as one of the most, you know, vibrant uh, uh, mm -hmm. things that I have seen in this country moving on. Uh, however, uh, you know, other projects that comes, not only in agriculture, I mm -hmm. choose to use agriculture, agriculture as a, because yeah. it's, you know, but there are other ones that are coming. Like, for example, even projects that uh, uh, they're giving to government and NGOs, most of them are not sustainable. They're just there to tick the box. And then in ticking the box, is meaning uh, what it means there is just to ensure that the numbers are attained. We have sensitized 1,000 communities. We have reached out to 200 villages. We have this, this, this. Those are numbers. It's like the statistics is what concentration is. Exactly. So how about the impact. the impact that it makes on those okay. people? And then how do you measure impact? It's simple. Go back to those communities and check. What you have taught them or what you have given to them, it's give, bring them. You have started with a baseline. Put out an end line to see how impactful is this project. It's not about the... Okay, and then project sustainability is also not measures, measured in one year, two years. It could be a long over thing time, and yeah. over time. So you cannot just also say... But we have seen a number of times that it has been over time and then we have never got it. On, 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 on that, track. That, that, that is important because um, I think sustainability, this is someone, this is a food for thought for everyone nowadays because um, these are things that will really affect the present generation and the future generation. So, but I want to come to this part of it. Um, I want to look at this in an African context. What can we do, especially the youths? What do we need to do in the Gambia? I mean, look co in collaboration with the African um, uh, environment as a whole, as youths, what do we need to do? What is our role as far as sustainability is concerned? Well, for me personally, I'm going to take us um, to number one is to open up trade. The number one problem that we have is Africa is not opening up for trade uh, within our within, uh, ourselves. within ourselves. Yeah. And then that is also giving us the problem for let's say for example with the land that Gambia has, mm -hmm. hmm? maybe if there is no enough land in in in, in Mauritania, mm -hmm. they could come and have their plant in Gambia and be supplying. So the supply chain goes. So there will be sustainability in the African continent in terms of production and productivity. We will also going to have employees. We're going to have other things that are going to be linked to those projects sustainability. You understand? So, but it's, if, for example, there's no trade open up among ourselves, among Gambians, among Senegalese, among Mauritanians, among Guineans, among Kenyans, among Ghanaians, the end result will definitely be what? 
will be uh, people will be discouraged and then when they discourage when projects start they will not be sustainable and when they are not sustainable it means we are going back to the drain board because as i said earlier these projects are mostly tied on number of years and after those number of years nobody comes back again to check what, what, apart from what, what, the what end, end, end of project end of project reports and of project and those are not the things that we want I have seen a project in 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 in, in, in the villages so long that has started and came went. The structures are still, are still there. there. The, the impact the has disappeared. Has disappeared. Mm -hmm. And they were very good projects. Project. So what could we use as a Like for example, in SOS, uh, I remember they used to have a project called Women Empowerment for Change Project. Mm -hmm. That's just that the best project that I have ever seen. One of the best that I've ever seen here was that. What they did was they're going to use the communities as a replica of those projects. And then when they go out, they will, when they face out, they will want to see those communities continuing with that project. Hello and welcome. This is the sustainability track on African Renaissance TV and I'm your host, Mohamed Dibagi. The sustainability track builds on the TV's mission to provide useful information to our viewers. TST airs every Tuesday at 9 p.m. on ARTV Network. This show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues on sustainability in Africa. Do join me as I bring you exclusive interviews and discussions on sustainability. And I'll be your host, Mohamed Bibat. So, and then they were tying the people's desire, the people's wants, on those projects. So the people were involved, people they were, were the sent day, from, the same, from this year. From the, from the scratch. Mm -hmm. And then it was a form of a continuity and then get, they are getting it on, you know. Ah, my brother, look at the concentration of projects in CRR. Mm -hmm. Still now, we are terming them to be the poorest. Why? It's indeed important because you, you will see, I've, I've already seen um, 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 projects where um, you see um, people, you go to communities for instance, like you know, institutions or government build projects that people will categorize as a government's project, not our project. Yeah. Ownership is missing. Yes, yeah, so, so, so that is important. I think um, when it comes to, like uh, we, we, uh, I was saying, I mean, when the project is implemented, what happens next is important. I mean, that is where sustainability plays a part. Um, there should be, um, we should make provisions for what happens next whenever there is a timeline given when it ends. But is that really happening? No, uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, let's take for example, if the people of North Bank want um, uh, uh, seedlings instead of fertilizers, what impact will fertilizers give to them? It means they're just going to have a pile of it without seedlings. Seedling. So like what we are talking about in this um, uh, sustainability it's ensuring that the people's needs are met mm -hmm. how are they met is they are asked what their needs is not only ask what they need is their assessment should be done in ensuring that we know exactly that this is their needs yeah because for example you could have the jengen the fallen who just you know want to be done or conscious by saying lilen buga lilen buga but in reality is that what, what, what they want what do they really what need? do they need so after asking them what they need or what they want then you come back now to look at the assessment and then in that assessment that is where you are going to now involve all the stakeholders to know that definitely these are the things that they want as, a, as, 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 as people these are the things that they want as a community and then when you are implementing the project also ensure that you include them to be part of the implementation of that project so that at least they will take ownership but if you bring all your members outside and then start leading it and then telling them this is what you're doing, this is what you should do, and then they had another method of doing which was easier for them, even though it was not good, they're not they, going to they take will, yours. They will stick to theirs. They will stick, take, stick to theirs. Mm -hmm. But at least you could look at what they're doing as people and then ensure that those things that they're doing are used to ensure that sustainability is in the place. That, 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 that is indeed important. Um, so I want to ask them this last question. I mean. From the experience you've gathered, um, from the knowledge you have, um, given the platform like today, um, what advice would you give to the development um, stakeholders um, with, from the government, the NGOs, the CSOs, the youth organizations? What would, you, what would you tell them as an advice? To me, the first thing that I will keep on telling them and I've also kept on saying ever since is all these projects that we are bringing to this country, we are bringing it for the betterment of the country. For the people that we said we represent mm -hmm. and then the people that we are doing work for them so if those people that we are doing work are not seeing the impact of the thing that we are bringing for them then there is a problem so my advice is let's go back to the drawing board to ensure to ensure that we are getting people 
Let's need know what they need are. Uh, mm -hmm. Measure it. Check how sustainable is those needs to those pre people's pre initiatives are, uh, and then we take it up. If not, what will happen again? We're bringing projects upon projects, activities upon activities, and it's not going to work. Um, people's needs must be considered. Um, people, communities must be involved from the onset of project implementations. Um, those were remarks from Mr. Babu Karnyang, the finance director of CRPD. And I've been your host, Mohamed Bibaji, and this was the sustainability track on African Renaissance TV here at Sunbat Beach Bar and Restaurant. Um, here you can come and make your orders, come with your loved ones, with families, and then to have your special weekends. Um, we have rooms available. Um, your dishes with all African dishes are available here at very reasonable prices um, here. And then you would always enjoy the, breezing, uh, the breezes of the river and a very conscious and sustainable, just like the program here, sustainable environment for all your needs. Um, until we come your way, um, look out for our next episodes. Um, with this program at TST here, we are open for um, scholars, uh, sponsorships and, uh, from all institutions and people for advertisement purposes in order to support the project um, here at African Renaissance TV. And I was your host, Mohamed Bibaji. <music>